and we are back for another GAC. We're currently in the second round for this first month of 3v3. We won our first match. It went pretty well. Our opponent ultimately stalled out on fleets. And now we still don't have Endal, unfortunately. Hopefully we'll get him towards the third round. I will have to lose this one for that to happen. So this is kind of a win-win situation. Either we beat him, and that's cool, or I lose to him, we have a shot at Endal. So going to be pretty content with whatever outcome we get. This is our opponent. His name is Zero. I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. Honestly, no clue, but that's fine. And he's actually in the same guild as Endal, Husky Patrol. So that's kind of interesting. We'll just go over his roster real quick like we do for everyone. It's, again, we'll keep running into this kind of standard where he's got 250 more relic, or 260 to be precise, more relic levels than us. He's got Star Killer, and we don't. He is missing the dash on Macron. I, I've gone over this a few times, and I really don't think that's much of a detriment to him, especially in 3v3. In 3v3, you really don't, I don't know how much dash actually does. I guess it's okay if you run the Vandor L3 comp, um, but it's... Yeah, we, I don't think that comp has been too hard recently, but he does have it. Um, he doesn't He doesn't have the Omicron, but he has the team. So then he's got, yeah, two of Star Killers. He's got Galactic Legend Ray. Again, pretty much same exact opponent or type of opponent roster-wise that we fight pretty consistently. We have him beat just barely in mods. Nothing really to write home about. I think we got like 18 on in these two categories, and then we have six more plus 25s. So pretty darn good mods. He's got a squash and six dots, uh, but that shouldn't be the end of the world. But going back to the board, he hasn't done anything, at least as of this very minute, he hasn't touched us. So our front wall, we set pretty much everything identical last time. The goal here is just to try to bring out all of his GL counters. Really don't know how much that actually is happening. And then the back wall, the only thing we changed from last time is we put Bam on defense, specifically just because we have Quill running at really like super high speeds and like, I don't, that's not really getting used on offense, so... Hopefully, it'll call something big out on defense, and if it doesn't, oh well. Um, so, yeah, those for defense, top is the same as last time, too. Just kind of harder teams trying to cut into his efficiency. That's kind of what happened with the last guy, too. And then back is our classic, quote-unquote, FU defense. So, pretty good all around. His defense is not that bad. He usually sets a really hard defense in fives, like five GLs. Like, it's a lot. Um, here, it's not too bad. Like, we have dash without the Omicron. We've got Malakless Darth Revan. We've got a Maul that's pretty slow. Uh, we've got the Qui-Gon team with Cam, and we've got Starkiller to deal with. So obviously Starkiller is going to be the big team to beat here. He gave us a major headache last time. Uh, but I think we're going to try C Watt against him and see where that gets us. I've been I've heard C did was doing okay, and then I had like two really good player friends of mine both fail with it. So I'm going to kind of throw that out. And then up here, this is these teams aren't that aren't that bad. Um, nothing can nest, which is disappointing, but all right, guys, let's get to that. Get to those hacks. All right, let's go ahead and get to the battles here. We're going to start off with C and Watt versus their Starkiller team. Starkiller gave me a lot of issues in the previous match, so I'm wanting to hopefully just take an AGL and call it good. So we start off with linking the two Empire characters, and our rationale behind this was just the fact that they are going to be the ones taking the most amount of turns. They're always going to be doing something. They're really going to be triggering Starkiller more often than not. So they immediately kill Watt, which that's not really a surprise. And then from here, we're trying to avoid, I think, hitting Starkiller a little bit. Because I don't want him to counter. So we go ahead and just hit Palp there. But, I mean, Star Starkiller just hits so stinking hard. Like, even... I mean, the, our, our small protection recovery and the protection still we're getting from them, it's great, but it's, it's just not enough. Like, he just... He just absolutely destroys us. And I was looking back over, he gets 100 crit damage from his Omicron. So if we do try that again, I think I might. I think linking him is enough. So I think that was probably a misplay. So we go ahead and bring in our JML like we did last time. And not having the cooldowns in the right position really host us here. Because Mar was able to get out in the in the beginning, land her Tenesse down, land Stagger. JML didn't get to go, and suddenly our our Galactic Legend team is very un-Galactic Legendy. So, I mean, just completely slaughters us here. So we're I end up throwing in a few junk teams just to get their cooldowns in the right position, as well as get rid of their turn meter. And then I just I did throw in what's this, my last Galactic? my second last Galactic Legend. I'm like, this is this is not great. Like this is just <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it wasn't fun. So 
and because we took a soul lord vader versus it last time and that didn't work so i'm like okay we, we have to bring in an actual team and I, didn't, I don't have a lot of good empire characters to spare i think maul i would have really liked to have taken maul in with this but maul was on defense so we get to this decision i'm pretty sure the the correct answer here is to fracture star killer uh the other two they can't gain turn meter so they're very limited on what they can do and if he's fractured or not if he's yeah if he's fractured that really limits how much damage they can do as well so we're just trying to get through this put as much pain on uh Mara Jade as possible we got the buff immunity so we don't really have to worry about her accidentally going to stealth um but like this still like I don't I don't love this battle um obviously you know losing twice never feels good but on top of that like they they this team was just so good uh this team was just so freaking good I'm almost, and I'm curious as where Malgus is going to stand as well. So we got it to our ultimate. This is really great because now we're immune to shock um, and we can really start to put the pain on them. And I think one of, Lord Vader suffers a little bit in 3v3, which kind of sucks because <laughs> he suffers a little bit in 5v5 for some other stuff. But having less opponents means that he gets a lot less underestimated. And yeah, that, that's not great. So he does end up pulling out the win. So thank you for that, Lord Vader. That was nice. And then we'd go ahead and take in our Jedi Knight Luke team versus Darth Revan. They didn't have Malak in here, so that did make it quite a bit easier. Talon actually is a problem, though. Not as much as Malak, but she she has a few things that warrant her being a pain in the butt. So, started off right there in the beginning, and we're just really hoping someone on our team does not dip below the 50% health and just trigger death mark onto Giant Luke, because that's, I mean, that's just going to end up being game. So, everything's going well so far. We choose to go after Bastila Sean Fallen just because Talon's going to keep stealthing, and obviously we can't go after Darth Revan because we can't assist on him, and he'll revive him if we do kill him. So they got the death mark, but luckily, because we slowed them down, uh, it doesn't stick, which that's really, really nice. Get everyone back up to farther health, and we're kind of stuck hitting Darth Revan. We trigger his revive, which is not great for us, but then he adds. From here, it's game. Uh, I wasn't too worried about this magic going into it just because no Malak just makes it a lot easier. We're going to go ahead and stick with what we know. We're going to go ahead and take Wampa versus the dash again. Very specific strategy here. Do not use Icebreaker unless you have days on you. That's how we actually ran into this in a different match recently where we accidentally did that wrong and we were just like, all right, we just have to wait for the days to come off. They looped the days. Uh, so that's this counter does not work if you cannot get that down. Uh, but yeah, this one doesn't have the Omicron, which basically means once we start getting those kills off, it's pretty much game over. So we wait till we have the days before we use the Icebreaker. Um, we killed Dash once and vandor saved him but then he used the prepared and we were able to kill him again and then he's just gone so yeah i mean th again this is pretty easy even with the omicron it's pretty easy but without it i mean it's even easier because you don't have to worry too much about uh having to kill people multiple times you can just go in and kill them so really really good here um yeah i mean not a lot to say no days left so i think at this point i probably just put it on auto i th that from from how fast the movements are going i'm pretty sure that's auto so coming into the next battle here, we've got our... Yeah, so Bad Batch versus Jedi Anakin. So I wanted to try this because I was curious. And I... You really need two rounds of stuns to keep Jedi Anakin under control. And I almost thought about passing the turn to Echo here and then targeting Jedi Anakin to stun him. But I didn't, I don't think we had enough damage to get through Qui-Gon Jinn without taking this hit right here. So we went for it. And this was I mean, this was really risky. It, it, the Jedi Anakin was modded very correctly. He was full crit damage. And Cam on the team, not only does he pass raw offense to Anakin, but he passes offense to Qui-Gon Jinn that gets spread when he's dead. So, General Anakin's AoE typically in the very beginning of the battle doesn't mean a one-shot, but at this point in the battle, it definitely means a one-shot. So, we shoot Cam there just to knock down the exposed, but I mean, the two of them just wreck us after that. I don't even know. I don't even know if, like, Tekken survived that hit. I don't know if that would have really changed anything, so... It's fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take in our troopers versus the small. And this isn't this is I don't, some, isn't something you can constantly do, but we were able to do it because even with my team not being modded correctly, we had the speed advantage. So I'm debating here whether or not I want to go with turn meter or just go for the big hit. And I, we end up going with turn meter because the big hit isn't going to be that big, and it's probably just going to shift us over to bow. And I don't want to get thrown back and forth. I just want to kill one of them. Uh, which is what we do with the mass assist so that works perfectly we get a ton of turn meter from that uh we don't go with the days right now just because i don't really care if maul counters us at this point it was a little bit more problematic when candrus was there because 
if Maul counters and hits a debuff character, then Canaris gets turned, but now the Canaris is dead, who cares? Um, so we punch Maul, he, he counters us, we don't care, we go for the basic here just to get the kill on him, and he dies, so... Worked really well there. We go in to clean up the Jedi Anakin just because it's it's on the front wall and we need to get through it. So we go ahead and take in like this. This is like our and this is this really tells you how far our rosters have come in 3v3. This is my weakest Jedi team. And this is still pretty good Jedi. Like Bastila, Ayla, Old Ben. Like that's a pretty good team. So we take them in, and Ayla pretty much just stun locks the whole team. So we were talking about this during the match. It's so Ayla is it's she's not she's not a top tier Jedi, uh, really by any any means, but she is she is so usable. She is she is so she's she's very very good. Uh, her her unique just makes her fantastic, especially with how how much I love calling people to assist because she calls them to someone else to assist and stuns them. It's, it's such a big win. So we go to the back and the only Galactic Legend back there is Ray, which we have SLKR for this. Uh, it's really it's really not that big of a deal. We just have to make sure that SLKR isn't the only one standing in the very beginning, and then when she gets to her second ult, we have to make sure we hold our 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 ultimate for that so that we're in damage move all right she'll just one shot us so and that's pretty much exactly how this battle goes there's nothing else that really could have happened and it's really good thing we still had also care because all of our other gls lost to star killer so ray goes she wipes out her two ads that was kind of expected honestly like daka kept gaining a bunch of turn meters so ray's offense was probably pretty high there and again we're not even when we get to the ult like we have the ult now we don't go into it because the only thing the ult is really going to do for us at this point is going to help us survive her ult. So we wait specifically until she's there. I'll also, uh, IG having health in his mastery kind of sucks for him because now he has no health. <laughs> so Ray goes ahead and does that. Uh, we target Quill for the, the mastery reduction, kill IG, and then kill both of them at the same time. So that went pretty well. And we take in our JTR versus this uh, CLS team. And the CLS team was on top. And this, the reason why we're not going for bottom anymore is because they have a gas team below, and I'm pretty sure we can't clear the gas team with what we have left. So we're just trying to get to ships. That takes priority. So we go ahead and take it. We are taking our JTR team here. And I was told that when you don't land the debuffs on Chupio, it's just a death sentence. We were able to make, I mean, I think there were RNG was on our side partially here, but we were able to make a pretty darn good recovery. Uh, R1 BB-8, not looking too hot, but, you know, getting to cleanse him on that hit, that was really, really nice. We get the right exposes. Uh, we're keeping being able to lower people's turn meter. We get uh, what's his face covered up again. Go ahead and hand wave on CLS. And Nubaka is just about dead here. I'm gonna be able to protect JTR one more time. Yes, yeah, so I don't. I don't think that was the right move. I think we should have smoke screen there. That was dumb. But I mean, we, it works. So what are you gonna do? Go ahead and take Kira Nest versus the Ducks team. And I, I was really afraid of this in the old season. This is one of the one of the kind kind of new liberating things about GAC in the new system is I don't have to worry about pan, uh, penny pitching banners only in the case of only in the case of a really tight match. And I mean, I already dropped a bunch of battles on this one, so I, this wasn't going to be a tight match. I didn't think we were going to be able to full clear. Uh, but that being said, I can take and cure here without any issues and really just see what the viability of this counter is because I didn't really love this counter and we are playing this in a very specific way we're saving the big hit for when we really need the health steal when we're low on health we're saving the aoe for when we need our protection fully refilled because if this does land just wrongly uh lobster does have enough damage to kill our nest he does uh so we're trying to trying to play this really close to our chest here um hux and first order stormtrooper are really giving us a nice protection shell but again there is there is a margin for RNG where it could this could really suck. So, trying to time those hits perfectly. And they do, the nice thing about the enemy team is they do have a ton of buffs. So, we're getting a lot of stacking crit damage here. They've got defense up, they've got crit immunity, and they've got, you know, a ton of advantage. So, this is really good for us. Um, just a matter of time before we're, we're able to knock them down. Trying to take Lobster down because one of the issues if you kill, uh, for example, Hux first... Then you lobster lobster gets bonus damage and it gets the next attack where you definitely don't have protection up. So get him down, and then we get down to just the first order stormtrooper. And I think I, at this point I really should just put this on auto. Like there's not. Ah, it doesn't matter. It was gonna go by fast enough. Uh we're gonna go take on their separatist newt Django team. This one's really simple. Uh, we've done this a ton of times. As long as the team isn't super fast, or even if the team is super fast, I, our this little number that I really like uh with crew. Uh, first order officer and first order 
Executioner Fox, rather. It's just really good because you get the two turn stun on Django, and then you don't have to you don't have to worry about him. Like, oh no, he has damage meter. It doesn't matter. You just leave him alone. Uh, we make sure to hit a debuff character there so we get our taunt back. Uh, we keep having to deal with extortion. I do pump turn meter to crew there specifically so that we can get rid of it because if you don't get rid of it right away, then they get to loop. They can get a chance at looping turns on you. We get the the stun back over there. Kill Shore. Drop Newt's turn meter. Hit the character with a debuff. And now they're they're getting extortion back out at a very slow rate. So we're able to control them super well. We we get the kill there. Drop the turn meter there. There's there's just a lot there's a lot of turn meter control in this team. And I've said it before, but the the two turn stun in three v three is so good. Just having one of their characters completely out of commission for a long time, it's great. And then yeah, so first order officer or execution at this point is build up a lot of damage, and we just kill everyone. So. Worked really well. Go ahead and take our boss team in against their Duke team. I mean, there's not really a lot to say about this one either. Um, we have an Annihilate. Um, Ness is going to be an issue. There was nothing to stop us from get, going right after B1 in the very beginning. We got contracts, so, you know, all right, you want to give me Ness as your only character? That's fine. I'll take her. Um, and now it's just, now it's just Dooku. We try to land the days. We do land the days. And days on Dooku is a neuter Dooku, so he just dies super fast. There he goes, and then we go ahead and take in our Empire with Mara Jade. I really wanted to see how this would work, because I haven't been able to use Mara Jade a whole lot. But we took her in against this team, and I thought that was pretty forward. Also, Cooling Blade from Vader, even after the nerf. Dang, that was a, that was a lot of good damage. Uh, so we want to keep the ability blocks here so we don't do the Cooling Blade. Uh, but I want to see how much we can actually loop with Mara. And this is a, this battle is a little scary, I should say, because Xylo really likes it when you load him up with debuffs. And I was supposed to get a two-turn stun. He didn't know, but I was supposed to get a two turn stun on him. We didn't. So he's going to get a really big hit. Yeah, almost one shots our Mara right off. Uh, we go ahead and take the stun on crew just so that he doesn't get a turn and kill us. Um, we're hoping that the offense up is enough to go through all of his defense. It is. And yeah, at this point, it's just it's it's an auto battle. He's got he's got shock on. He can't recover his health. Um, it's not going to be enough for him to pull it out. So again, probably auto at this point, but. We're not doing that for some reason. Get him pretty low and then just merciless and call him. Pretty nice win there. And then, yes, yeah, so we're using this team again. I really like this team. It's it's good. It's been kind of a favorite of mine because it it can it has a lot of punch up viability. But yeah, so we've got we've got Padme, Ahsoka and Wrecker in here. The two turn stun is really nice. We do keep the two turn stun held. We're going after Marauder first just because I don't want to. His damage is pretty decent. If he gets, catches us with our pants down, it's going to hurt. Sidious dodges the Jedi, which honestly should have been expected. Um, still don't have our two-turn stun ready, so we're just going to hold that. And then, yeah, I just kill him. So, 54. Pretty cool. Take a try against this GG. Really not a great idea. Like, I didn't have a lot of better options, but if we were Relic, this would have been fine. If we were even, I think even as low as Relic 3, this would have been a pretty solid win. But gear 12 against an R8 correctly modded character, yikes. It's just a slaughter. So, we're just... We're just trying to see where this gets us, trying to take this team apart. My tray isn't able to beat a whole lot in general, so taking down the B2 there. And we're trying, I think I realized that about at this point, that if we just spread the hits out enough between the three of them, because now B2's dazed, we can probably just annihilate General Grievous. So reduce everyone's cooldowns. I kill my tray. That sucks a lot, because now we lose the isolates. So Magna's going to taunt. And we're not going to be able to actually annihilate the Grievous. Um, so at this point, I realized that. So we just kind of cut our losses. We get the kill on... Um, we get the kill on What's-His-Face on Magna Guard. And now we're stuck behind Grievous. And this is... In the beginning, this doesn't look that bad. But once he dips below his protection threshold and he's constantly cleansing the pain, he doesn't get stuck behind Scion. And when he doesn't get stuck behind Scion, he can kill Nihilus. And when he kill, can kill Nihilus, we can't kill him. So this... Well, I'll, I'll take, you know, the two kill or whatever. Uh, yeah, not losing is never great. So takes a minute for him to get through Scion, but he does. Uh, we go ahead and take in our Jedi Knight Revan, Jolie, Kalkatarn versus this weird Finn team. Like this, I, this doesn't seem that bad of a team. Um, like Finn and Poe, they kind of have a lot of synergy between the two. And very kind of similar to Han and Chewie where they'll just kind of take a lead regardless of what it is. That being said, I like. I, I just I don't know if Boba is better than OG Finn, um, because he he gives a crit damage to everyone, which is nice. But yeah, 
Uh, then we go ahead and take in our Mandalorians, hashtag Gar Saxon, against this General Grievous team. Uh, Armor Shred, General Grievous really does not like Armor Shred. We're able to get uh, a lot of stacks of best scar out here immediately onto our Taunter. Which, yeah, the boat team, I mean, the boat team came into the game at a very unfortunate time in the game where we didn't really need new B teams. And that's all she was, so. So now we have this fun adventure with Gas, where he's the only team left. I was pretty darn sure we weren't going to be able to beat him. But, you know, why not? So we take in two teams. We burn his cooldowns. We take in Aiden. I'm like, all right, let's... I don't think Aiden gets anywhere because, you know, no revives really sucks. Especially for Aiden. But, like, let's let's see where this gets. Um, so, you know, of course, they kill him. This is really cool, though. So, Stormtrooper, when he doesn't crit, he applies an expose that isn't resisted. And he counters. So he's constantly applying expose to, to gas and just working that protection all the way down. So now this protection is pretty low down. We take in this little number. And I'm just trying, I'm trying to get get to get gas to sit, and then I'm trying to get spy to nuke someone. So that's all we're trying to do here. We took in Dooku because of the stealth and whatnot, but if I was really smart, I would have made sure they didn't have the AoE on cooldowns, and I didn't do that. So uh, we're not stealth right now. So we actually, we go for a basic, because the big hit means nothing if you're not stealth, and we're not able to crit out of turn. So we just go ahead and basic here onto their arc because there's really nothing else is going to do anything for us they hit gba which isn't super great i don't love that we're able to get the other guy back in there which is nice because otherwise we would be dead spy gets a big hit off and suddenly there is a decent chance we get through this because now they don't have the bonuses of one of the extra clones so we send in a bunch of teams just trying to do what we did before trying to get gases protection down so that we can take in a team and kill arc or echo this time and this is this is rough man <laughs> like the inquisitors didn't do crap um this team didn't do crap either so yeah they're not doing very good against protection on this team now we had marauder here marauder does a decent amount of damage but he kills marauder instantly so i'm like all right sidious this is all on you um yeah again the cooldowns are a big issue because if they didn't have echo's grenade then they wouldn't have been able to get past the taunt but yeah sidious sidious puts up a fight here uh they burn the aoe so i'm like okay so the next team has to have a lot of damage. Um, so we take Fennec and Embo. They die instantly. So I'm trying, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get his protection down enough, but not too much to the point that the next team is going to have to deal with my full protection. So we get him all the way down. Um, and then I'm, I'm like, all right, we need a team that's going to be able to deal this amount of damage to not only take him down, but also take, um, take out Echo when we get the chance. So we take in the first order. And this is kind of good, because now it's just a Xylo versus Echo, so they're not gaining a lot of turns. So Xylo's able to take out Echo, and now it's just solo gas. So just repeating the process here again. We're taking in a team to try to get his protection down to finally get in one big team that'll actually be able to kill him. So we take it, we take in Biggs, uh, or rather Wigs, with Princess Leia. Filled up his protection down, so we're trying to take another team. So we take in Tuskens, which is fun. Um, and for a second here, I'm like, can we just stun lock him to death? Like, is that a thing? Um, and then we credit him and he comes out of the stun and episode two is replayed. So then we took in our pretty much last good full team, which is Gideon range and, um, storm. I'm hoping the, the crit immunity along with the armor shreds and the demoralized will just be enough to take him down. And it is, it works really, really stinking well. And then the only thing really left is ships. So we go in there and I didn't really want to have to time out but we ended up having to and this really wasn't great because it didn't leave us in a perfect position where we we're all able to take out xanadu blood almost immediately which was great um and then we start working on what's his face over there they bring in boba so I'm like all right let's let's just start working on him let's get rid of all that stuff hopefully we can come in and kill him and i don't i think we might have misplayed somewhere in here so we took in cassian just to be able to nuke their boba and i think maybe we should have tried to be playing the field more in the sense that we should have been should have taken in the phoenix character so that we can control just control the field um but yeah so we're able to get that that guy down pretty quickly but yeah so now we would have had a full five team if we would have taken in another character and we probably would have been able to buy the houses so i think i think we misplayed it there um they get through our whatchamacallit our tank which isn't that big of a deal so i go try to correct my error here and bring in phoenix we're not getting a lot of the assists we need. I, I hold the Shield Disruptor because Houndstooth has a lot of tenacity because there's no Breach out right now. Um, 
they bring an IG, and this is not great, because typically for Rebels to work, you need to be killing the reinforcements in a way that they never get back to three uh, three characters. You need to be constantly killing them, because then if they get to their uh, ultimate, it's really just kind of game over. You can't do anything. So we bring in... We bring in our whatchamacallit, but now they've got a ton of breach. We can't get past what's-his-face. We land shield disruptor, but then they cleanse him and they heal. This sucks. They heal their um, whatchamacallit. And we get our big bonus turn here, but it's it's just not really enough. We needed, we needed either more characters or, again, they, they were taking too much control of the field by this point. So yeah, now they've got contract, and that's pretty much where this is just done. They're able to get everything else off, and it just it ultimately just ends up in a loss. And at about so right before this, our opponent actually uh, messaged us, and he had told us that he had arrived in Vegas, and he was just going to be kind of done for everything, so he wasn't going to make any attacks. Actually, um, oh awesome, Did the game freeze up. Oh cool, that was not the great time to crash. So yeah, the, this doesn't really pan out the way I want it to. That doesn't pan out the way I want it to. However, it was enough. Um, our opponent, yeah, like I said, he didn't, wasn't just going to really come in and attack. I guess I deleted that message, but yeah, so he did, he just got his participation trophy, which is fine. Like he, he was busy, no shade towards him for not playing the game. Um, but I didn't even bother with the rest of the fleets because I already knew we had won and it was really tiring after putting, I think it was like 13 battles into gas, so... That's pretty much it for there. Um, hope you guys liked it. Remember to like and subscribe. And as always, stay awesome.